Isla Morada in the fabulous Florida Keys, the sport fishing capital of the world. I'm about to put that title to the test with Ryan Wenzel. We plan on targeting blackfin tuna early in the morning, searching for mahi by mid-morning, and then anchoring on the reefs for yellowtail. It's time to go at it. George Vovaromo's world of saltwater fishing. Big fish don't stand a chance. I love September in the fabulous Florida Keys for a number of reasons. Number one, fishing pressure is next to nil. It's a great time to go after dolphin. The blackfin tuna are on the hump. The reef is good. So could you imagine my enthusiasm and we're coming into the Florida Keys and you see the sign, welcome to Isla Morada. And here I am trailer in the Mark six, launch the boat, get the Mark six over to worldwide sportsman and get ready to crank off this trip. I'll be fishing once again with Ryan Wenzel. And our goal was to come out here in September and jump on the black fins from there, progress out, look for dolphin. And if time permitted at one point, get on the reefs and live chum, the large yellowtail snapper. So I was deck handing a few years before I started my own business, which was three years ago. And uh, we, you know, this business has taken off so much and we're really excited. And uh, you know, we'll do everything from mahi, tuna, snapper, swordfish, pretty much everything you can do in Isla Mirada, sailfish in the winter, kingfish on the wrecks. It's all, there's so much cool things to do here. And you know, it's the best place to charter because you're able to do it year round. There's no off season for us. So I had told George that we wanted to make sure we get an early start leaving out of the Bayside Marina at Worldwide Sportsman. Uh, we wanted to be one of the first boats to the bait patch in the morning, get us, uh, get us our good shot on the bait first. That we did. We got in position. We started looking around for the pilchards, looking for sides, like birds dipping, and watching the sim rad machine. Boat goes into neutral. You're chumming. And here's Ryan. I've got to give him credit. He could open up this 14-foot net like it's going out of style. And he throws that down and next thing you know, here we are loading up both live wells in a Mark VI with live pilchers. Ryan wanted to get out to the hump. He wanted to get up current of the hump and start live chumming in traditional blackfin fashion. Toss out hundreds of pilchers, get them blown up on top. Pitch out a belly hook pilchard on light spin tackle and have fun catching the blackfins. So here comes the blackfins blown up on the pilchers. We have our baits, we're free lining them out, and Ryan is the first one to hook up and bring a blackfin to the boat. All right. All right, you started off good. Finally got bit. Going in behind you. They're watching other boats around us. Yeah, he's right here on the surface. All right. I just can't reach with this. Watch the outboard. Come over here. Ugh. Come through. There he is right here. I'll flip him with the rod. All right, in with the black fin. All right, first fish. First one in the morning. Got to put him in the box? Absolutely. All right. George Poveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing is proudly brought to you by Penn. Let the battle begin. Mako, you'll find them where the fish are. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. Mercury Marine, go boldly. George, we'll be right back. It's a little after sunrise off Isla Mirada in the Florida Keys. Ryan Wenzel and I are boxing up some blackfin tuna before heading farther offshore in search of mahi. Getting in position takes, uh, you know, a, a lot of skill in holding in position because it gets crowded at times on that up current side of the hump. And here we were in September, which is pretty much the slow season as far as tourists and other anglers, but you still have the backbone of the Isla Mirada charter boat community out there with charters. And you look around and you see some of the real famous charter boats out here, the Relentless, Paul Ross. And next to us a couple of times, you had, uh, I like to call him on the Catch-22, Smiling Scott Stancic. I was gonna get Smiley. What's up, Scott? <laughs> he doesn't even wanna say hi. So you're in the mix with all these heavyweight, well-known Isla Armada captains, and you're just doing it and catching black fins and bam. Nice. Is he there? He's there. Yeah, he's there. All right. 
Good one, 12 pound spin. Feels so great. When you feel that pick up, that line just races and you turn the reel handle, just wind tight with that circle hook. And once you see that band and get that first run off, it's all outstanding from there. I'm trying to double up with you here. See if I can do that. And hey, we got the black fin. I see the color pattern. Here he comes through the surface. Give me a underwater. second, I'm still coming in. Coming up, coming up, coming up. Okay. All right. I'm flip them off here. Let me get them off the gas. All right. Let me grab this tail or whatever. It's a right. better size one. It's always great when you're looking down. You know, you're, you're, you can tell by the fight sometimes, skip Jack Black, but when you see that little goldish hue on the top there, you always you know. know. It is. And that's a little better size one there. That's probably uh, one of the better ones here. They're, sometimes they'll get real big here. Sometimes they'll be football size, kind of, which is what aver is average right now, but this one's not bad. And then George hooked up right after me. His was a little bit bigger, of course, but uh, I was soon to one up him right afterwards, which you'll see. <laughs> here, I'll make it louder. <laughs> I'll give you the drag. Ready? Let me know when you see the sinker, okay? I got a little ways to go. I had it pretty down, pretty deep. And drifting live pinfish across the hump on the deep rods also scored. Okay, you just bring me to weight. It will come on up a little higher. Yeah, yeah. Hang on, he's running. Try one more time. Let me get it steady here. Okay, you're free with the weight. So now I need to get up here and see if I can help you. Oh, you're about 40 feet out. I might be able to stick this as is. Oh, I just lay out to get a good Nice one. Woo, there we go. That's the one we wanted. <laughs> All tangled up in the other rod, but hey, it's in the boat. It, it's in the boat is right. <laughs> Got him going this way. Fish. Hey, I'll hold the tail. It's all you. Just like that. This is the sign of fall time in the Florida Keys, especially in Isla Mirada. The tourists aren't here again. And the tourists aren't here because it's a weekday and it's slowing down. Slow season. Love it. So after we caught the tunas, we decided to run out and look for dolphin. Uh, we, we went straight out, tried to go as far as we could just to make sure that we weren't going to miss them out deep. Uh, we didn't see much offshore, so we kind of circled back in and we found a slight little line with a few sets on it. And that's where we spent most of our day was just riding the little grass line that we found with some frigates and some blackbirds on it. We had the Sim Red Raider on, bird mode, set it to three, four miles, looking for any kind of bird sets or working birds. We have all the pilchards in case we saw something running and gunning. Uh, trolling outfits were set to go. And as we were getting closer to that mark, I noticed there was life, flyers, birds. So let's go ahead and put the trolling baits out. And we did. Ryan took the wheel. I put the outriggers in position and I'm starting to put the very first bait out, the outrigger bait. I dropped it back maybe 30, 40 feet. And I looked, there's a boil behind the valley. I said, I'm getting hit right now. I got one on. Uh, All right, I'm gonna keep it just like this. I'm gonna get a live bait. Okay. And I was able to fish out another bait, send one back, and I hooked up on the spinner as well. This guy's no, I got one on. All right, beautiful. All right, well, good. Though somewhat of a common occurrence given the U.S. Naval Air Station on Boca Chica in the lower Florida Keys, it's difficult not to jump out of your shoes when a Navy pilot does a flyby and breaks the sound barrier. This happened not once, but twice on this trip. It broke the sound barrier. That, I put that guy in a penalty box for that. All right, you want to open up the fish box there, George? Yeah, sir. Coming in with one. Here we go. Here we go. Coming in. Hang on. Incoming. And we got one more incoming. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick a little gaff in this one because this one's on the 12 pound. We'll get it eventually. There we go. All right, coming to the back. All right. Bring them on in there. But uh, the very first dolphin ended up in the Mark VI. And that 600 foot zone seemed to be paying off. At least now we know that we had dolphin traversing that avenue. George Poveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing is proudly brought to you by Simrad, 75 years of innovation in marine electronics. Rapala holds the world record for world records. Suffix always use the best line. Starbright Boat Care Products, clean and protect. George, we'll be right back. 
Our mid-morning troll for Mahi is about to pay off once again. Ryan Wenzel and I are applying the waters off Isla Mirada in the Florida Keys. Pines and Palms Resort in Isla Mirada at mile marker 80.4 is nestled amongst some of the most beautiful tropical landscaping in all the Florida Keys. It's a laid back village style property featuring oceanfront cottages and suites with one, two, and three bedrooms. All accommodations on the property feature a full kitchen should you prefer to cook and dine on the day's catch. Outdoor grills are also readily available. An oceanside freshwater pool and tiki bar, as well as a launch ramp and free dockage, are just many perks you'll find at Pines and Palms. So we're trolling around, and there's a frigate out there working and coming down and going back up. So this looks good. I know we're going to get fish here. And uh, I was right. We're trolling. All of a sudden, boom, rigger goes down. I got a small one. I think he jumped me off. I got a nicer one. Yeah, you do. It's just playing out nicely. Yeah. I'm going to come in. You going to send that live bait out that I got hooked up? Uh, yeah, let me get this one out of the way. I got a good little bowl here. Good thing, you got them swimming with the boat, boat barely moving forward. It's, the fish has rhythm, you have the rhythm. 100%. That's the best thing for gaffing them is keeping the boat in gear. You're doing fine. Just keep on coming. You can tell it's the bull by the way he's fighting. Those bulls, they love to go down deep and just get sideways to the current. All right. Nice shot, George. Oh, beautiful fish. That's a... The gap's coming out. All right, I got the fish. That's one, and that's a very nice bull you got there. Grab the tail of it there, George. Weedless valley hoot. That's a beautiful fish. Well, after we had a uh, pretty solid day of fishing, and we decided to run back in towards Worldwide Sportsman, uh, get the fish cleaned up, get them on ice, and uh, we also washed the boat real quick and made sure we had a nice cocktail with the Papa's Pillar while we were doing it. <laughs> so after a pretty good day one, we decided that the next day we were just gonna stick on the reef and see what we could uh, scrounge up off the bottom. Pretty much the same, same routine, first thing in the morning, le left the dock at Worldwide pretty early, got on the bait, made our few throws that we needed, and then we decided to roll out and anchor up, anchored down in probably 65 feet, put the chum bag in the water, started throwing some freebies, and it took a lot of patience, that's for sure. We had to wait about a, a solid hour before the bite got really fired up, though. What do I got on here? I don't know if that's a yellowtail or not, or if it just turned into not a yellowtail. Uh, whatever it is, you're having a good time with it. <laughs> exactly. Enjoyable. Definitely a good fight, whatever it is. I'm gonna come over and watch this fight a little bit. Yeah. Oh, no, nice rainbow runner, big rainbow runner. All right, let me get a net. You wanna get the net? That's a nice size rainbow runner right there. Take it easy and I'm gonna get you. Woo! <laughs> Holy cow, look at the size of that thing, dude. <laughs> it's one of the biggest ones I've seen in a while. That dude, awesome. Oh, Ryan. That's a great sushi fish right there. And check these, the, the, the vibrant colors, looks like a king sailfish replica, the way they eat those blues. I mean, this is, this is like, this is the Pacific Yellowtail. Exactly. This is our version of what they call yellowtail. When you go to a sushi restaurant and you see yellowtail on the menu, is about as close as we can get to uh, that. And, but we really wanted the yellowtails. That was what we were really after. So we constantly tried dumping more and more bait. And I found that the more bait we threw in the water, you know, we were able to bring the yellowtails up off the bottom and push the zeros back a little. And once we started dumping big scoops, that's when we really got the tails fired up. And Ryan was catching yellowtail, and I was catching yellowtail. Then Ryan started to get very aggressive with the light chumming. Yeah, nice tail. I, if you need a net, are you gonna flip? Shoo. I think he swallowed it. Take a look at that fat one. Nice yellow tail right there. Uh, you, you just threw, uh, you broadcasted some pilchards and you threw yeah, right threw in on it? Yeah, threw a big scoop and chucked right in on it. And he was fired up. And I got an incoming. All right, I'm gonna get out of your way. Nice so between the heavy light chum and these explosions and our now a good current, the fishing was red hot. George's Tackle Locker, brought to you by King Sailfish, the pioneer of catch and release mounts. Visit kingsailfish.com. I'm often asked which electronics features I rely on primarily for most of my fishing. So here's the scoop. A highly detailed chart showing depths, depth contours, and all bottom features is paramount. 
and I usually run that full screen. In addition, I'll activate the trail feature to keep track of where we've been. For example, if we get a solid strike, uncover fish, or see an area we might like to return to, I'll drop a mark for a visual reference. As far as the charts with the most precise bottom information, I'm using SimRad's new CMAP reveal charts. These charts provide ultra high resolution bathymetric readings of the bottom. My SimRads utilize chirp enhanced transducers to help uncover life within the water column. Chirp technology enables the fine tuning around both standard low and high frequency settings on a fish finder. In addition, Chirp technology broadcasts three separate frequencies versus a single frequency, which is typical of standard transducers. This yields much greater target separation and highly detailed bottom readings. It's unparalleled when searching for bait, game fish, and even scrutinizing the makeup of bottom and any wrecks. And my Simrad Halo 4 radar stays in bird mode when we're offshore. In this mode, the radar will detect and show the position of any birds. We'll usually set the radar's outer range around the three or four mile limit, so we can get to any working birds before they dissipate. In our case, diving birds often translate to dolphin and tuna. Add in water surface temperature readings and a zoom feature for expanding sections of the water column and you know the features I utilize most on my Simrad. Mercury Performance Stats, Isla Mirada, Florida Keys. Seas, two to three feet. Power, triple Mercury Verado 400 horsepower outboards. Props, Mercury Inertia Eco 21 inch pitches. Total miles traveled, 68. Consistent cruise, 4,200 RPMs. Speed, 42 miles per hour. Total fuel burn, 65 gallons. We'll be right back. George Poveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing is proudly brought to you by the Florida Keys and Key West. Come as you are. ACR, the leader in marine safety electronics. Papa's Pilar Artesian Crafted Rum. Never a Spectator. Float On, the original aluminum immersible boat trailer. King Sailfish, the pioneer of catch and release mounts. Visit kingsailfish.com. One of the most iconic structures in the Florida Keys, if not the entire coastal U.S., is Isla Mirada's Alligator Reef Light. A major renovation project is underway to restore the 150-year-old beacon to working status. Here's Rob Dixon to tell you all about it. It's our Statue of Liberty. It's uh, the history of it is so important. Uh, being here since 1873, standing here through a lot of thick and thin weather. Also, uh, the coral that's underneath of this lighthouse. I mean, it's a very important part of our ecosystem here. We have the third largest barrier reef in the world here. And as we know, the reefs need all the protection they can get these days. This is important to everyone. Hundreds of thousands of people have, have been to this structure over the years. And uh, I think we can use help from anywhere we can get it. So while we were in the mix, I had just landed a yellowtail and George hooks up on uh, something. I didn't know what it was. Hooked up? Yes, I. Nice. Yep. That's cobia. a cobia. How about this, a small cove? You want me to net it or? It's an actual, I thought it was a remora. It's a legitimate Yeah, cobia. I did too. Small though. Yeah, a little small cobia. Man. Oh, it's a little cobia. A variety. So anything will come up once you're live baiting here. You never know exactly what's gonna what's gonna bite. Little guy, but they do put up a fight, don't they? They do. Wasn't quite legal, but still a cool catch. Get the uh, diversity of the uh, different species that we're able to catch here on the reef. Here I was with Ryan Winzel in September, a dead time as far as tourists go, and usually people think it's a dead time fishing wise. But nothing could be farther from the truth. We came out a day and a half and capitalized on blackfin, dolphin, and then the morning following, capitalized on live chumming, beautiful yellowtail. So here we were, beautiful September, a lot of rod bending and a lot of great table fare to take back home. You know, it was such an awesome experience being able to fish with George again. I always love getting to do it. I hope we get to do it again soon. We were able to do everything and we were able to catch mahi, tunas, yellowtails, rainbow runners, yellow jacks, pretty much everything Isla Mirada has to offer this time of year, we were able to do. And I always love getting to uh, just go out there every single day. It's my uh, favorite part of why I do what I do. Ryan Wenzel is a terrific guy. I thoroughly enjoy fishing with him. And if you ever get the opportunity to visit Isla Mirada, 
Look him up. He runs behind Worldwide Sportsman. He's one of the young guns and he has that passion. And I can guarantee you that when you clear Worldwide Sportsman, he's gonna do everything it takes to put you on fish. If you wanna keep track of our fishing adventures, we welcome you to follow us on our social media. I'm on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash george.poveromo. I'm on Instagram at George Poveromo. And you can see our shows in 4K broadcast quality on YouTube at my YouTube channel, which is George Poveromo TV. Jump aboard and ride along with us.